Hello, I'm Bob Papa. On October 6th, 130-pounders Manny Pacquiao and Marco Antonio Barrera meet on HBO Pay-Per-View. In looking forward to that fight, we now look back at one of Barrera's most memorable fights. It was April the 7th, 2001, at the MGM Grand Garden, when undefeated featherweight Prince Nassim Hamed finally met his match in Barrera. Marco Antonio was coming off his first epic battle with Eric Morales, which he lost by disputed decision, and Barrera was looking for a signature win to get back on track. Boy, was this it. Let's now join the action as it was called by Jim Lampley, George Foreman, and Larry Merchant. All right, gentlemen. We run over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. No rough tactics. These trucks here are a little high. These trunks, tampoco alto, they're a little high also. Punches here are still good. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. Okay. Barrera believes that a victory would make him a hero in Mexico. The Prince believes that a victory will earn him recognition as a great fighter as well as a great showman. The stakes couldn't be higher. And a quick word about the tactical face-off. Prince Nassim is a southpaw who usually dispenses with the jab relatively early, squares his shoulders, and throws power punches. Marco Antonio Barrera is a conventional fighter, but by far his biggest weapon is the left hook, especially to the body. Boy, they've got one of the most straight-laced referees in the business. Joe Cortez is not going to take a lot of foolishness, so be careful of the disqualification. Barrera's got to make certain that he stays solid in every round with a good body shot. Get this guy off of his feet, moving away from him. And the Prince has got to show, come out of his trick bag and make Barrera try to be a showman as well. Barrera boxing, not just wading in, gets to the body, wobbles nails with the left hook upstairs. The one thing you don't want to get into is a slugging match with the Prince. It all looks so good at the start. He looks off balance. You hit him with your jab. It shows an effect. You begin to feel like, I can do this easily. That's what Kevin Kelly thought. Ahmed was momentarily dazed, I thought. Conned his way out of it. Took some good shots. He's back on his feet. But he allowed Barrera to taste his power just a little bit. and picking his spots. It's a very interesting choice of fight plans by Barrera, and he's making it work very effectively in round one. He's landed two big left hooks upstairs and a couple of shots to the body. Naz hasn't done any real damage. And that left hook that Barrera landed was a hurting left hook. Those are the kinds that make you stop and wonder what in the world you're in the ring with or who. Round one is all Barrera. As Prince Nassim takes several power shots from the Mexican star.
I got in Barrera's corner. Our interpreter is Ray Torres. Good work, Marcos. Barrera fighting an intelligent, measured fighter against an awkward fighter. Briefly dazed him early in the round. Later came on to land those hard jabs. George, in round one, the Barrera crowd was going wild every time he connected with Naz because Naz's, heads, Naz's head swivels around as though on a pedestal of some sort. Is it solely because Naz's balance is so bad that he looks to be affected by every power punch? Absolutely. He's always off balance. That's why you can oh. catch him with the looping shots. Uh, a warning because Naz threw a backhand. Joe Cortez is quicker than any referee to stop Prince Nassim from backhanding with his jab. And the Prince has got a little whip under the eye there. That may be a changing factor when the corner goes into the corner and may not be able to give advice. He got to work on his eye. Excellent right hand body shot by Barrera. And he could see the mouse under Naz's right eye as George pointed it out. Now he's got Barrera clowning a little bit. That's what you want. That's what you want if you were the master at that kind of thing. Get the guy stepping in the new waters. English crowd chanting Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. And that's the thing about being in the dressing room so long with all of that playing around. Someone is going to come out very cold, and it was the Prince this time. Notice that Barrera, when they're in close, has his head keeps his hands very high, very aware of Ahmed's punching power. But, uh, Barrera's got to make certain when he throws his shots that he's at home. Don't go lunging out there. Shades of the Cesar Soto bout in Detroit as Barrera hey, hey, is hey. either pulled oh. down by Hamed oh. or pushes him Hold down. On. Mark Ratner comes up onto the ring apron. Hey, What happened oh. there was Hamed lunged at him into the clinch and tried to throw him off balance, and Barrera responded. I don't want any rope tactics. We're going to put that sushi, I don't want to disqualify anyone, you understand? All right, time in. Nassim beginning to become more active. George Foreman referred earlier in the round to the long delay that preceded the fighter entrances here. A delay of an hour as Prince Nassim Hamed had his glove wrapped, rewrapped, and put on two or three times before finally coming into the ring. Hard left hand by Prince Nassim, countering Barrera inside. The Prince is the aggressor. Right hand and a left by Barrera, rocking Naz back. I didn't expect to see the Prince being the aggressor this early. And Barrera countering him. <laughs> Round two mostly marked by the wrestling incident as both fighters wound up on the canvas together. Perfect. Now you got him, you got him, you got him. You got him fighting your type of fight. That's what you want now. You got him kept all this, that's what you want. But keep backing him up. You're getting him confused. Keep backing him up and you know the key shot, when he saw that, that weak jab like that, yeah. bam, right through the sun, okay? Mm -hmm. Let him sort the, oh, Marco, the jab, that's your key. You gotta keep right. it. You're, you're more intelligent than him. Much more intelligent than him. Then lift up your head and keep working. You're doing great. You're not gonna leave now. Okay, but you're gonna lose you, I did that. All right. A review of the wrestling incident. There you see on off balance, Ahmed jumps into Barrera. Barrera holds him by the waist. They dance around and fall to the canvas. 
And I think Barrera's big complaint was that Naz wrapped his arm around the back of his neck. I think the big complaint is that he made the, made him wait for a long time in that dressing room. And he's unsteady about it. He doesn't like it. Round two was fought at a slow pace. 35 punches thrown by Hamed, 31 by Barrera. That is the kind of pace at which Prince Nassim wants to fight. That's why Emmanuel Stewart said perfect when he came back to the corner. Barrera is allowing Hamed to create and make the fight. He's not initiating anything. Just sits and wait to counter. That could be good, could be very bad. Is it out of respect for Nassim's power that Barrera is fighting the way he is? I He's think, Jim, it's because they feel that Nassim is more effective as a counterpuncher rather than taking the lead. And they're oh. testing him in this way. Oh, he's hesitant because he's reluctant. That's what he's being. If you're a good fighter like uh, Barrera, you want to stay in there, keep the action going, and take advantage of it. Oh, great. Bring up. Blood on the nose of Marco Antonio Barrera, apparently from one of those left hand shots by Nassim. Nassim keeps his eyes up. His hands down, his neck is straight in the air. Why doesn't the guy charge him? He's reluctant. You, you must take advantage of all of these openings created by your opponent. So while Barrera, in the weeks leading up to the fight, insisted that he had no particular respect for Nassim's power, he's fighting as though he does. When a guy stands in front of you with his hands down and his neck up, why, what are you waiting on? Ahmed smiling at Barrera. Barrera continuing the fight at a pace which favors Prince Nassim, or at least seems to. When the Prince get into a good rhythm, he throws two rights and then a left. Two lefts and then a right. He hasn't found his rhythm yet. Barrera lands a jab. Prince Nassim grins. Barrera lands a right hand. Prince Nassim grins bigger. He's like a snake charmer, that Prince. Stands in front of a good puncher like that. Takes a lot of nerves. Well, he's got enormous reflexes, and he's getting hit here, perhaps more frequently than he expected. Prince Nassim stepping into a straight left hand, glancing blow. The blood is flowing from both nostrils of Barrera. Hi. So far, Barrera has neutralized the punching power of the Prince. You stayed in the corner on the ropes and, and he hit you. Wait, hold on. Let me work on this. That's it. Next round. Okay. And keep roughing him up. You know, when you finish up, you get your punches. Move his body when you finish up. You understand? Be a little more physical with it. You understand? If you throw a shot, you block it, push it with it. You understand? Start physically breaking him down now. Big one. In close. A right hand, then followed by a left of the nose by the Prince, is probably what drew blood from Barrera. And that punch was probably good enough to win the round from Hamed as the two fighters combined to land only 21 punches, 13 by the Prince, only eight by Barrera. You heard Barrera's corner asking for more activity. They said, you stood still and he hit you. Don't do that. Harold, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jamal got a two rounds to 129-28, Prince Nassim Hamed. He was just a busier guy in rounds two and three. I don't think Marco threw enough punches. Jim, what Marco Antonio Brera is doing in this fight is this. He's moving to the left to stay outside of the Prince's lead foot. Lead foot. The Prince is a southpaw. By going to the left, you make him reach with his left hand, which is his power punch. So Barrera's theory in this fight is to move to the left, stay away from that left hand. Big left hand by Barrera. Stuns Prince Nassim. Naz smiling, but there's no question he was hurt by that left. I have it two rounds to one for Barrera. The Prince is going to get hit a lot because he falls asleep all the time playing around. 
He, get, he gets hit because he's off balance, George. Oh, and a composed, played. balanced fighter like Barrera is he's not a hit off balance, Larry. You just can't measure this guy's movement with your orthodox boxer. He's only off balance when he's doing something that the orthodox bo boxer is doing. He hasn't got in one position yet. Ooh. He gets hit because Barrera is an excellent boxer who steps inside and asserts himself as he did right there. That's for sure. <laughs> Nice jab and a straight punch to the body by the Prince, who seems fully recovered from those earlier blows. When the Prince seems like he has this guy under control, he falls asleep, doesn't pay any attention to what he's doing, and he's, he pays because the guy Barrera is a puncher. No, oh, George, because the guy Barrera is a terrific fighter. <laughs> And you can't, you can't relax against a fighter like him. You might get away with it against lesser fighters. Now you see the Prince watching, watching, steps back like a cat. He recovers real good. Herrera ringing the right hand shot right, to the body. Break out, break out clean. That right hand was the best shot for the Prince. Good right hand. He seems to be throwing one punch at a time, George. Oh, no doubt about it. That's what happens when you're a puncher. You don't believe in your combination because you think you can take a guy out with one shot. Shooting the straight left down the middle. That's what Prince Nassim wants to do. Barrera goes to the body. Every round, Barrera should send him to the corner hurt with a good body shot. In round four, Marco Antonio Barrera landed the more telling blow. Hi. When you're getting hit, it may not be that much, but your head is up, so it mm -hmm. looks bad to the crowd. Mm -hmm. And he's catching it with one punch. The left hook. Mm -hmm. Every time you come in, he's catching it with the left hook. You're coming in from here, and you're getting caught. Nice and controlled. You got it. Just, uh, you know, move around. You're going, you're doing well, and you're winning, Marcus. You need to move, uh, throw more jabs, but you're winning. Yeah. Very composed, Barrera. That was a hit, but there we All right, see. Right hand inside. But the most important thing so far is he has stayed away from the Prince's power. In fact, he's been so scrupulous about staying away from the Prince's power that he doesn't follow up when he lands a good shot. In the last round, Barrera twice landed good shots, didn't step in to try to follow up with anything. Hunt and Peck were both fighters ever since round one. In the last round, Barrera landed nine power punches, to only four for Prince Nassim, and a couple of them were good hard shots. Oh, we are, we are, we are. A good left to the side of the head by the Prince that time. This Prince hit so hard and he believes in his power. Barrera is standing real basically in position to counter with any combination. We've covered Prince Nassim with glory for his punting power, and justifiably so off his record. But if any fighter's been wobbled here, it isn't Barrera, it's Naz. Too much wobbling for the Naz tonight. And Barrera is starting to connect with a left jab. Naz with a quick combination there. Well, you don't want to pick on a rough guy like that in the rough tactics. He can get rougher than you. I think the Prince will find that out with Barrera. Marco Antonio Barrera focusing his eyes on the middle of Prince Nassim's chest and occasionally throwing straight right hands to the body. Now it has become a chess game. The Prince knows that his left hand, his big left hand, 
has been unsuccessful so far, and they're both looking to find the right way to approach each other, standing in the middle of the ring. Herrera's left jab has been the best thing he's had tonight. Whenever he throws his left jab, it turns the fight around. He's able to pop Naz with it. Here you see the difficulty of trying to get to Prince Nassim's body, although Barrera gets a right hand in there. For the most part, Barrera has been fainting toward the body because as you start forward, as is gone. <coughs> Big left hand by Prince Nassim. You know, he was right in the pocket that time. He didn't jump away as Barrera thought he would. He just stepped in with this left cross. That's what it was. Yep. Well done, George. This guy has just got the reflexes of a, a cobra. Of a crouching tiger. Something like that. Of a hidden dragon. Oh, Why well, you have to give this guy those rounds? What? You don't have, you're not supposed to win his round? Listen, you, listen, 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 listen. You let it. Wave a hand on points. Okay. This fight goes away as well right now. You lose your championship. You know, you're, he's going to have to fight. You know what I'm saying? Every time you get hit, even with a little light punch, your head is up. And therefore, it looks much worse than it is. You understand? Marco, your jab, your jab, you can control him with the jab. Faint him and use the jab to keep him at bay. Yeah. Ahmed may have won this round. Short left hand. Didn't get his full extension. Shoulders and hips into it. Let's go. Well, as Larry said, it has become a chess match. Generally speaking, featherweights average throwing about 60 punches per round. Your, your average run-of-the-mill club featherweight might throw 60 punches in a round. In this fight, my copy of box numbers, Prince Nassim Hamed is averaging 30 punches per round and Barrera 39. So they're throwing about half the average number of punches for featherweights. And Barrera is doing the boxing this time. A good yeah. job of boxing. Well, you've heard Emmanuel Stewart's opinion as he has now told Prince Nassim in two consecutive between rounds periods, you're losing the fight, you're falling way behind. If this keeps going this way, you've lost your championship. Not only so, he made him tuck his head just a little bit by telling him it looks more like he's doing more damage to you. Rather than saying, there you are. But there it is. The head is too straight up. The head was up, Barrera landed a right. As his chin flung out to the side, that means points. Ahmed going to a conventional stance, trying to set up a right hand, or maybe wanting to step forward with the left. Barrera goes to the body real good for the left jab. Ahmed is best keeping the southpaw position to stay away from that jab. As Ahmed went into right, the conventional right, right, stance, Barrera right, got up on his toes, ready to throw more jabs. Barrera kept saying for weeks he was going to attack 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 you wonder whether the prince has been thrown off <laughs> huge left hand by barrera there well certainly those of us at ringside have been flummoxed <laughs> because barrera was convincing about the notion that he would go forward and make it a war and he's done anything but he's done a good job of actually boxing tonight he lands the bell of jabs Straight right hand, he lands the better. He has confounded the experts, and right now he's confounding Prince Nassim. Oh, 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 oh. Nassim, wake up back here, punch. Let's go. And as the rounds go by, if Barrera continues to pile up points, you might have the specter of Prince Nassim having to go try to hunt him down in the late rounds. He's already trying that. You don't follow a puncher around trying to get a knockout. You let the puncher come to you. Let's go. That was lovely. Rather than close in a 
clinch. Ahmed threw a little bit of left hand at him, and Herrera came right back at him. That's why he is Herrera. Lennox Lewis watching his English mate, Prince Nassim Hamed, the chess playing heavyweight champion, perhaps critiquing the chess match for those up. sitting near him. Let's let your power shots go. So your volume of punches is down too much. You're waiting, you're getting them in position, you get that, you let him jam and you slip it right here, but you won't do this and come back with the left. Let the big shots go. Don't worry about it, Marcus. Let your big shots go. You punch too hard. Arco, a little more pressure. Make sure you throw that left hook to the liver. That's going to be a good punch for you. You got to put some pressure. Be first. Now, that little by play on the clinch uh, will tell you that Hamed has found out he's in with a true professional. Hamed, ever dangerous, however. If there's one fighter here who figures to be able to end oh, the fight it, or begin it, to end it. it with a punch, you hold ahead, let's go. it is still Hamed. But you cannot depend on one hand, one punch, with a skilled fighter like Barrera. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, I got it going back and forth. 57, 57, three rounds apiece. When Marco Antonio Barrera opens up, he does real well. The rounds he loses, he just doesn't throw enough punches. He really should move his hands more, Jim. Those three rounds I got him losing were just because of inactivity. All right. I have him ahead four rounds to two. I started to say, even though Barrera's corner believes they're ahead in the fight, and Emmanuel Stewart tells Prince Nassim that he's behind in the fight, Harold Letterman has it even. In round six by copy box numbers, Hamed was only eight of 28. Barrera 16 of 51, picking up the pace. That's what you do. A guy expect you to attack him and attack him. You box him. And then when he's depend on your boxing him, you start fighting. That's what Barrera is doing. He's pacing himself. Barrera with a right to the belly and a left upstairs. Mm -hmm. As grins at him, Barrera says, come on. Come on. All right, break. Break out. Break. That's what you want a solid fighter like Bar Barrera doing. Clowning with a clown. Big Don't right hand to the body again by Barrera. No nonsense now. Emmanuel Stewart said to Prince Nassim, let your big shots go. Manny knows that throwing 30 punches around isn't likely to get it done. Naz beginning to jab more frequently. Those shots on top is not gonna do it with Barrera. He's gonna have to climb it, bring it down. Close to the chin. Ahmed refused to concede before the fight that Barrera was the best fighter he was ever in with. I wonder what he's thinking now. Ahmed picking up the pace with his jab, throwing it more frequently, landing it more often. That was a slap by Barrera. Hard shot with the left. Herrera unmoved. Boy, he's throwing these sludge hammers type shots. They haven't been able to get square in the middle yet, but he's starting to pick up the power. I think I saw blood from the prince's nose. The royal nose with some royal blood. Couple of left jabs onto the Royal Chin. Interesting round. Alicia Hamed, wife of the Prince, looking urgent and not entirely confident as she sits at ringside and roots for his nastiness. Come on, take a deep breath. Okay, I want you to focus now, okay, but one to one. Right? Good round for Barrera, according to copy box numbers. We need to throw the left hand, right? You're holding too much on it, right, Pa? You're holding too much with it, right? We have to let it go, okay? All right, Pa? We're gonna fight from your shoulders now, okay? Yeah. Parker, you gotta keep repeating the jab. That jab is what's gonna do it for you. Hey, jab! The jab! That's what you need. The jab, the jab, the jab. Don't stop throwing it. This is the jab 
Jab, bubble jab, two out of three ain't bad. No, particularly not when Naz's chin and head are bouncing around to make these punches look even more effective than they are. Through round seven, it appears, at least our eyes, that Marco Antonio Barrera has fought an effective tactical fight, limiting Prince Nassim's chances to get off with big shots and landing enough of his own to appear to take a lead on the scorecards. Harold Nettleman still has them only a point apart. I think the Prince corner didn't see that Prince was moving on and starting to take charge of the fight a little bit. The may have given, misinformed him that round. Now for the first time you see the Prince getting closer and closer to the ropes with his back himself. Early on he, he had Barrera moving. Barrera following his corner's instructions perfectly. Jab, 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 jab. Left hand partially blocked. Whoa. One landed solidly. And a right to the body by Prince Nassim. Barrera came back low. I didn't think that punch was low. Cortez did. Which is the only thing that counts. <laughs> My point. <laughs> thing about Prince, when he doesn't have anything else, he's got power. And he lands another left hand upstairs. Pereira suddenly dispensing with the jab. Naz stalking and trying to land that left cross. Counter punch, counter punch. You just got to finish up, Prince. When oh, Prince throws go. one shot, it doesn't even go. matter if he comes back with go. another. He's got to finish up with his right hand. He throws a two-punch combination, he can get a knockdown. But he's off balance, George. Not with his feet always, but with his body, the way he bends his body. It's effective against most fighters, against all fighters, until... Barrera, but Barrera is so balanced, so on top of him. Well, it's like a snake and a mongoose. One's off balance if he's doing what the mongoose is doing, he's off balance. This guy's watching everything going on the Prince. He just got hit that time because he didn't come back with his uh, right hand, left hand. you got to finish up. One, two, three, and he's in business. One, two, three, four more rounds, and the Prince will be out of business if he doesn't change the course of this fight. He's not going to win throwing 25 punches in a round. You're getting in front of him and stopping and letting him get out first. Mm -hmm. And every time you let him throw that punch of business out here, you slip, shoot the left hand if you can. Go to him and make him punch, and once he punches, let the left... Best punch of the round right here. Barrera goes under a left, comes over with his right. Got right, to finish up. Overall, CompuBox right, numbers through eight rounds, and it goes without saying that CompuBox punch stats are not the be all and end all, but they do provide a numerical blueprint. Prince Nassim Hamed, 83 out of 246. Marco Antonio Barrera, 125 out of 333. Barrera throwing significantly more, landing significantly more. Barrera, 62 to 36 head in power connects. Round nine begins. The first round that Prince is trying to keep his right foot on the outside of Barrera for a change. He hasn't been worried about that early on. You see the Prince just will not finish up with a shot. One, two, three, and he's in business. George, it appears that every time the Prince has a new tactic to try, Barrera has an answer for it. He never tries throwing one combination, the Prince does. He comes back, 
he can do it. He's got to come back with some kind of punch. You see, one shot out. Now the Prince has got himself in a position where he has to look for a knockout, which is when you can get knocked out. Still didn't come back with another. Now the Prince has got his rhythm going just a little bit. On trickling from the right nostril of Barrera. The corner's been doing a good job with Barrera of keeping the bleeding down. They stop it instantly. Very professional. Left hook to the body by Marco Antonio Barrera. All right, bring out, bring out. Bring out, bring out. Matt is not doing a lot of left hands. Barrera is looking at the floor, trying to distract Barrera. Fat chance. Left hook upstairs by Barrera. As if to say, I'm not fooled by your antics. Barrera is one tough cookie. Doggone right. making faces at Barrera, but faces don't get you points on the scorecards. And that was another round won by Marco Antonio Barrera, in my personal estimation. I know we're going to take him out right now, but listen, Pipe, not with one single shot. Right, Pipe? We're going to concentrate more on his body, okay? We have to work that body. He's on his way down, and you know it. You already saw it, right? How we doing here? Right. We're going to go to the West Coast logo. We got three rounds to go. We're going to have to punch. All, every punch has knockout on it. You understand? All you got to do is land one shot, man. You may miss three, four, but if you land the fifth shot, you still can knock this man. You've got to go for the knockout. Put everything you One problem with Ahmed. He throws that oh, big left up. hand. When he misses, he is off balance. Off the floor. He is in against a complete, experienced, yet still in his prime professional fighter from a culture of professional fighters. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay, six to three, 87, 84, Marco Antonio Barrera. Jim, I think he's won the last four rounds because he's opened up, thrown power shots, hurt the Prince, landed the real telling shots. The Prince is not throwing that left hand at all. You haven't seen a real hard left hand for the Prince, at least in the last four or five rounds. So Marco Antonio Barrera really winning this fight the last four rounds. He's thrown the left hand, but he hasn't thrown anything with it. He's missed it. Oh, He's depending on one punch too much, George. Well, his corner for the first time told him to put together five shots. And I believe him, if he can put together a combination as he just did, things can change, but he's going for one shot. He can't. Barrera right, is countering him right, too well. He will not the way look you to beat a counter puncher shots. by throwing combinations. That's the way you stop the counter, throw combinations. He's not a combination punch, puncher, George. He's hey, a one punch at a time slugger who's getting hit too frequently to get it done here. There's a big left hand. Barrera covering up. Barrera's playing possum. He's There's a hard up. right hand by Nassim. And Barrera comes back with two left hand shots of his own. We could have fireworks down the stretch if Prince Nassim feels the urgency of this situation. Can you 
believe the odds on this fight with three and a half to one? I Can you believe 28 out of 30 riders picked him in? Where is the respect for Marco Antonio Barrera? Well, I bet it's there right now. I want it. I want it. I want it. I don't know how you could dismiss a fighter of Barrera's class that easily. I'm sure he was wondering the same thing. Barrera's doing a good job. He stays on balance. Doesn't lunge out now. He's making the press reach in, waiting for a counter punch. But still going for one point at a time, one shot at a time. The combinations have been thrown by Barrera. Ten rounds in the books. A very nervous Alicia Hamed, mother of two. That was your round. Go on, on ahead. I got you. Okay? You take it to him. Yeah, that was your round. Okay? You got two Go rounds. Ahead. Two rounds. Hello, I wake up. Okay? No, I left. Two rounds. Six yeah, minutes. Cooking now. Keep punching, pal. Cooking the way you're going. Power punching. And you're walking it down now. You understand? Know yeah. Everything for power. Don't throw one just one punch. Throw a combination. Then be quick about it. Throw more punches. And if the last one, make sure that it goes in with some force. Make sure you want to hit him hard in the inside. Don't, don't let him think. Don't let him relax. Seconds out. Seconds out. Let's clear the corner. Six minutes left for Prince Nassim Hamed to try to rescue his unbeaten record and his superstar status. Six minutes left for Marco Antonio Barrera to try to rise to the top of the featherweight heat. Hard right hand by Barrera. All right, break, break out, break out, break out, clean, break out. He's, yeah, he's way behind, and even punches. Larry Merchant is in Prince Nassim's corner with Emmanuel Stewart. Larry, what's up? Emmanuel, do you believe that the Prince needs a knockout to win this fight? Beyond a doubt, I definitely believe he needs a knockout, and I have told him as such. But see, even though, I don't think he's ever been hurt in the fight, but when he gets hit, his head is up so to the point that it looks so bad to the crowd. But is this the Barrera that you were concerned about, who you saw in his last fight and yes. said this is a different fighter? Yes, it is. A very determined fighter. And after you punch, he counter punches. Immediately he comes right back with punches after you finish. And he seems to be very focused and very well trained for Naz. Naz has got to try to land a big knockout punch, even at the risk of possibly being knocked out himself. Thank you. And in round 11, despite the scenario that Emmanuel Stewart just quoted to you, it is Marco Antonio Barrera who has been the aggressor. He's not the aggressor. The stop, Prince is stop, bringing the no, fight no, to him. On, he's just landing more shots. <laughs> well, he's getting the chances to get off, I guess is what I mean here, yeah, George. But he's not the aggressor by any means. No, I hear what you're saying. He's taking advantage of Naz's aggression to turn it against him. Naz will not come back with any shot. Huge so right hand by Barrera. All right, break out, clean, break out. Break out. After Prince break Nassim out, had out, the edge in power shots in round 10, Marco Antonio Barrera has landed several big shots in this round. And the English crowd is seated and quiet. The improvisational style that the Prince has developed since he was a boy is being exposed by a well-schooled boxer-puncher brawler. The Prince always seemed to think there is a chance to get a knockout. Well, there is, George. There is. But not when he's running like that. Not when your fight plan becomes a flight plan.
short left hand oh, inside by Hamed Landon. Barrera wrestles the Prince into the ropes. They're three minutes away from the conclusion. Let's get some water. You gotta keep boxing. Just the same way you've been doing it. This is the last round, and all you gotta do is box them. You can't back up. You've got to bend down and go to them with short punches. Antonio Barrera. He landed 32 out of 59 punches. It's a 10 of only 24 for Prince Nassim. Harold Letterman, how do you have it going to the 12th? 106, 103, seven rounds to four. Marco Antonio Barrera. Jim, I got to tell you, he may have lost the 10th round to Barrera, but boy, he had a huge 11th round. So in the last six rounds, Marco's won five of them. And I'll tell you, I, I think the secret is, he stayed away from the Prince's big power, and he landed the better shots. Look at the right hand by Barrera. He wants to close the show with authority. His corner told him to just box, and he's not taking that advice. He's going for it. He's been on the wrong side of at least one decision here in Las Vegas. He doesn't want it to happen again. A reckless Prince Nassim goes charging right past Barrera. That looked like one of his entrances flying through the sky. If you close strong in a fight, all things can happen. So the fight is not over for the Prince. You just got to close strong. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Okay, let's go. Don Lipio, Don Lipio, clean run, guys. The Prince is trying to figure out how can he get in one big left hand. He's been trying to figure that out all night. I think Barrera has already shown with his chin, one left hand won't do it. That's true. Too much chin. Barrera pounds Nassim into the ring post, risking disqualification. Furious at Naz's antics. Time out. One point. One point. And a point deduction from Barrera. Unusual for a veteran fighter to have to touch in that gloves. position. Barrera doesn't want to touch any gloves. Barrera wants to hit. Big left hook by Barrera. Scintillating round for the Mexican star. And he seems to be the stronger at that weight. Absolutely. Stronger and better.
Ahmed only seven of 20. Harold, how'd you score it? Look at you, when you lose a point and you win the round, it becomes a 9-9 round. So, 115, 112, 7, 4, 1 even. Marco Antonio Barrera, he won that 12th round big. Cortez took away a point in our last seven rounds. He certainly won six of them. Marco Antonio Barrera down the stretch, okay. just landed the clean of harder shots, no doubt about it. Let's take it up to Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand, we go to the scorecards. Dwayne Ford scores it, 115 to 112. Chuck Jappa has it, 116 to 111. And Patricia Jarman Manning scores it, 115 to 112, all for the winner by unanimous decision. Marco Antonio Barrera. That win catapulted Barrera into the top pound-for-pound -pound list where he's resided for the past six years. But after losing to Juan Manuel Marquez, Barrera is once again in a position where he needs to make a statement. Will he be able to do it against Pacquiao, who decisively knocked out Marco Antonio in 2003? We'll see on HBO Pay-Per-View October the 6th. I'm Bob Papa. Thanks for watching another memorable evening from HBO's Boxing Archives.